Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. And because he hasn't made an appearance in a while, this is Lincoln. Say hi, Lincoln. Huh? Say hi. He's, he's, he's a little shy today. <laughs> but this is Lincoln, my reading companion. He, from time to time, likes to devour books. <laughs> Are you going to give me some love right now? Yeah? Okay, let's go over here. And today, um, <laughs> I do want to talk books. Um, in particular, one book, uh, When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Alyssa Cole is somebody whose books I was introduced to via her romances. Um, her historical romances to me are just brilliant. Her more modern romances I like as well, but to me it's those historical romances that just like are wonderful. <laughs> when I saw that she was coming out with a thriller though, I was super excited because I do tend to like thrillers and I already know she is somebody who writes with about social justice. Uh, her novels often have a lot of politics in them and I really like that and so I was really looking forward to see what she did with a thriller because I knew that it would contain politics um, and a lot of po political commentary and sure enough this one does. That is the theme that will stand, jump out at readers and um, it's that of gentrification. The story is set in Brooklyn and our main character Sydney owns one of the historic brownstones there. However, uh, slowly her neighbors have started to sell their brownstones, brownstones and sell them to um, white families. And so slowly she's seeing her neighborhood just disappear and things become way too expensive. And so through the eyes of Sydney, Alyssa Cole takes us through this entire neighborhood, not just to like people living there, but people with businesses there, or uh, some of the community gardens, things like that, and how different aspects of the neighborhood are impacted by this process of gentrification. Um, there's also a lot of history. Our main character, Sydney, wants to do her own tour of the neighborhood so that people know uh, some of the history of it, some of the people that are living in the brown storms, and especially that black history. And as Sydney builds this tour, we get then a lot of the history of gentrification in New York and of slavery in New York. Um, and Alyssa Cole does a really, really wonderful job with all of that as I fully expected her to because I've seen the way she handles history and her historical romances and it's just really really well done and so you do get a lot of detail and a lot of that history here but it comes through in a very organic way because um, it's in the process of putting together this tour of the neighborhood that we get a lot of that now the main <laughs> thing that makes this a thriller um, is that there are monsters here, right? Politically, there are people doing very ethically shady things, but uh, what Alyssa Cole does with this is make those people actual monsters. Like, like it's not just some poli nebulous political entity. She makes the monsters real. And um, I can't go into details without revealing too much of that, uh, but, but I think that that is such a great tool. There's another book that I read that used very similar themes and tools to, to connect those real monsters to the politics and to the people who enact these policies. And I just think that making the monsters real is a really great way of adding the political commentary and also just making that fear that is real for so many people real to the reader as well. I, thought, I think that's just a wonderful tool. And so the thriller element in for most of the story is really just like everyday aspects. Sydney looking around her neighborhood, talking about the brownstones, uh, the people that live in them, the people that give the sanitized tours of the neighborhood, taking an Uber becomes a dangerous uh, element for her, going to the grocery store and interacting with one of her white neighbors who threatens to call the police on her. Like these are all like elements that built tension in the story and that for, from what I've seen for some readers there's there's the thriller as, aspect seems to be missing in most of the book but I think that um, if 
if you don't see gentrification as a problem, if you don't understand what a lot of black people are trying to tell us right now and have always been trying to tell us about the dangers they face on a daily basis, then then you're gonna miss that thriller aspect here. For me, as I was reading it, I it felt the the fear was very real because I understood that to Sydney it was a real fear, and I I was in fear for her, and and so I it, it felt the tension felt very real to me as I was reading the story. Um, so I I felt like it was very much a thriller. Now most of the action in the story takes place at the end. Uh, very very and probably like last 10 percent and so a majority of the book is a little bit more slow paced atmospheric more of kind of like a everyday things happening i felt there was a lot of tension in that uh, but i do want to warn readers that if that's not your cup of tea then you will not enjoy this book another key element here is the relationship um well we get two points of view in the story. One is Sydney, who's our main character, and the other is Theo, who uh, lives right across from her and is one of the new white people living in this neighborhood. He has just bought this brownstone. He and his, not he and his uh, partner have um, purchased it, but he and his partner are no longer in a happy, healthy relationship. And so he lives upstairs and she lives downstairs and that clearly that relationship it's on about to end <laughs> and and so one of the main themes there is that of mental health issues especially depression we see that um, um, from Theo who is grappling with the end of this relationship but we also see it from Sydney's point of view who we are told at the beginning her mom has been sick has been dealing with that um, and um, has it's has been sent away and because of her health issues and so Sydney is dealing with like not having her mom physically there um, and she's clearly very depressed so if you're not in a position to be reading from the point of view of people who are dealing with those mental health issues um, uh, please beware and approach the book knowing that that is there and it is a major element um, of that. Um, I'd wish that there had been a little bit more about you know the characters getting help for their mental health issues but it also I understand why it didn't quite fit within the parameters of the story. It's a thriller so you kind of need your characters to be going through like a ton. You need to put them through hell um, in order uh, to you know get to the climax at the end. So I totally understand that um, in the story. Uh, I, I had a fantastic time reading this novel. I think just the tension building, the characters were real to me, uh, the history that um, Alyssa Cole interweaves in this story was just fantastic. And I would recommend this book to anybody looking for a politically conscious thriller um, that is slow paced for most of it and then it's going to put all the action in the end. I think as long as you know some of those things are there um, you will do great with it. So I, I will leave it at that. Um, I no, I haven't touched on every single theme that, that came out in the story. So if you want to add another element that you noticed in, in the book, feel free to uh, chat with me up, uh, down below about that. Um, I don't intentionally leave things out, but there's a limit to what I can talk about in these videos. And I usually just hit kind of the points that interest me the most and all of that. But there's definitely a lot more to unpack in this book. Um, if you are interested in reading it, uh, let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!